I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Now that you made the flow and lighting upgrades to the budget built tank and you know what water parameters you're looking for in your budget reef tank, it's time to put some corals in your tank. Now you may want to keep hard corals, you may want to keep soft corals, or you may want to keep both. I recommend you start with some forgiving soft corals before you move on to those picky hard corals. Some soft corals need warning labels though because they can be trouble. Disclaimer, I'm not saying don't keep the corals I'm about to show you. What I'm saying is know what you're getting into before you take the plunge. Xenia, also known as pulsing Xenia. Easy keeper, and it's also cool as it pulses on its own. Grows like a weed and it can take over your tank. It's nearly possible to get rid of short of removing the rock that it's on. And it can pop up in other places in your tank without you even putting it there. Green star polyps, also known as GSP. Another easy keeper that people love as it looks like grass. Not that kind of grass. And it moves in the current of your tank. Grows like a weed, it's impossible to get rid of short of removing the rock that it's on. Now GSP isn't as invasive as Xenia, so if you want to keep it in your tank, isolate it on a rock that isn't touching any other rocks. In other words, you want to build GSP Island so the rest of your tank is safe. Sponges. These rarely do well in a reef tank, especially in beginner hands. Mushrooms. The blue, orange, and red ones can grow out of control and pop up all over your tank. Recordia and Yuma mushrooms are okay, and I'll talk about those in a bit. Okay, enough about what not to keep in your tank. Let's talk about what soft corals need to be on your shopping list. When it comes to soft corals, my first love and still one of my favorite corals overall is zoanthids. Zoanthids, also known as zoas, are a very easy coral that come in a variety of colors, and they play nice with one another. That means you can put them close together to form a zoa garden like mine here. We've got all different types of zoanthids. They're all sitting around one another and they're not fighting. Pro tip, while very rare, zoa poisoning, more accurately known as palytoxin poisoning, can happen. Palytoxin poisoning is characterized by a rapid heartbeat, sweats, cough, and sometimes a metallic taste in your mouth. Headlines such as couple stick from their aquarium or an aquarium can poison you are often accompanied by a story of how people were working in their aquarium and then got sick. Here's the thing about these new stories. Often the people who got sick had taken the rocks out of their tank and put it in a pot of boiling water and boiled it or placed it in their oven and cooked it. They did that in an attempt to try to clean up the rock. Never ever boil or cook the rocks from your tank. Now another way that you can get palytoxin poisoning is if you're handling zoanthids and the internal liquids of the coral get exposed to an open cut on your hand or your arm or into your mouth or in your eyes. This would happen like if you're handling the coral and you touch your mouth or you touch your eyes. Simple precaution of wearing gloves and wearing eye protection will help you prevent from getting palytoxin poisoning. And when you're done handling the coral, wash your hands thoroughly and of course avoid handling the coral if you have any open cuts on your arms or on your hands. Palytoxin poisoning is pretty rare. I've handled corals for over 10 years, I've fragged plenty of zoanthids, and I've never gotten anything close to palytoxin poisoning. Now if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, metallic taste in your mouth, headaches, racing heartbeat, seek medical attention and tell them what you were doing. Don't just show up to the ER and go, I have a racing heartbeat. They're likely gonna miss a diagnosis and you are simply handling zoanthids. Oftentimes, the people who have palytoxin poisoning recover after one to two days, but if you feel like you haven't had any symptoms, go ahead and get yourself a medical attention. Other soft corals that are great for your tank include gorgonians, the photosynthetic kind, very easy keepers that provide motion in your tank, finger leathers, these can get quite large and are fun to watch expand throughout the day. Toadstool leathers, another easy keeper that doesn't disappoint. Recordia or Yuma mushrooms. These come in a variety of colors and they're not as invasive as their blue, red, and orange cousins. All the corals I've mentioned are available on liveaquaria.com and the corals in the soft coral reef tank all came from Live Aquaria. You can find them in the coral section of liveaquaria.com and then select beginner corals. Acclimating soft corals is really easy. Float the closed bag in your tank and then either add half a cup of water to the bag every five minutes or use our drip acclimator kit to drip acclimate them for 50 minutes. Soft corals are hardy and easing them into your tank by acclimating them is always a good idea. Once you've acclimated your soft corals, where do you put them in your tank? If you're gonna run a soft coral tank, then put those corals wherever you think they look best and I'll give you some tips on that in a minute. If you're gonna run a mixed reef tank with both hard corals and soft corals, put the soft corals lower down in the tank. Soft corals don't need as much light as hard corals, so by placing them lower in the tank, you're saving the places on your rock work that are closer to the light for those light hungry hard corals. 
Soft corals like some flow, but they don't like tons of flow. You want the coral to move around like this one, but not get pounded by the flow such that the coral doesn't open up or gets damaged. Soft corals are easy keeper corals that are happy to let you make some mistakes while you're learning the skill of reef keeping. I made these videos to flatten the learning curve for you, and here's a tip that will keep money in your pocket and keep you from potentially trashing your tank. Pro tip, photosynthetic soft corals don't need to be fed with coral food. They'll be fine without it. Forget about feeding them. There's a wide variety of soft corals to suit any taste. Add on the fact that they are very forgiving and you've got a great set of starter corals for your tank. Even if you decide that you like hard corals, soft corals still add variety to your tank and make for a prettier, more diverse reef tank.